Pro Tour New Orleans. Ninth place with Red Deck wins. Oh, wow. Yes. In New Orleans, 2001? Yes. That was a pretty hostile field for Red Deck wins. Tangle Wire, Jackal Pap, and friends. People were reanimating Verdant Forces and donating illusions to people in that tournament, so that's quite impressive. Don't care. Give me as many red cards as you got. Obs on aggro versus Obs on mid-range here. So Kato on the beatdown plan yet again. Both these players sitting here at 2-0. and And typically a matchup that's very favorable for the mid-range side of the table. Well, there's a second land there. Unfortunately for Kato, it does come into play tapped. That top card is going to stay on top. The set will draw a card. Corsair of Crufix will reveal a Siege Rhino. See what Kato picks up this turn. If he's got something to play. You see he does have a Wingmate Rock in his hand. Siege Rhino there as well. And he'll deploy an Anafensa. So he'll have to take one to cast it. But he does have a 4-4 on the table. That does outclass the Corsair at this point. But this is sort of the, the problem with the matchup from the aggro side. Anafensa is trivial for the mid-range deck to either kill or block. And it promotes building up a board, which plays into the sweeper package that many of these decks go to in the post-board games. You see a Siege Rhino on top of the deck here. And Arderan's going to take care of Anafensa. So Deset wants to clear a path to be able to attack for two points of damage, and he does just that. Kato's going to go down to 17. For the record, it was 2000. Pro Tour, New Orleans, 2003. Oh, the Tinker Pro Tour. Yes. I mean, that's even better for yeah, red deck wins. Yeah, that's even, that's even crazier. Uh, a deck list that only... Uh, you know, I, I, we're, we like streamlined decks, so we love decks that have all four. If his deck was four Fire Cats, four Grimlava Mancers, four Jackal Pups, four, four Slith Firewalkers, four Curse Scroll, four Firebolt, four Seal Fire, four Tangle Wire, four Volcanic Hammer. It is incomprehensible in a format where people were tinkering for Mere Incubator on turn two that that was legitimate, but that is awesome. Well, that's what the four Pillages and two Rack Ruins in the sideboard are for. Listen, man, I tested, I tested plenty for that PT. <laughs> I did not have the same success trying to rack and ruin and pillage those decks. <laughs> Fleece Main Lion is going to block Corsair of Crufix. Sea Drive is going to come down here. So Deset has got a nice thing going right now. Corsair building up a nice advantage. And a Sea Drive is starting to rain down here. Kato's going to have to try to catch up pretty quickly. Though land number five would not be a bad starting point. No, I don't think so either. You go Monsters with the Fleece Main Lion. It becomes very hard for Jay to attack. Here's a Siege Rhino there for Kato. There is land number five in Sansep Citadel, just a passing of the turn, so we'll head back Jay's way, and Jay will draw an Obs on Charm. Top card of the deck is, of course, of Crufix. See how Jay wants to move forward this turn. Jay's not in two territory, uh, two spell territory just yet. He's getting there. Well, the awkward thing here is that uh, Jay has end hostilities in his hand. So, how does he play this game to maximize end hostilities without giving away that that's what's going on here? It's tough to do. Yep. There's a temple to start, so trigger. So if he wants to leave Corsair on top, looks like the answer is no. So that's going to go to the bottom. Top card will be a copy of Dune Blast. Well, the cat's out of the bag now. Yep, the wrath <laughs> effect has been shown. Never mind. Now it's time to kind of just play it straight up here. Obs on Charm. We'll take care of Fleece Main Lion. Bye bye. Though no good attacks here for this set. He will come into the red zone. I would be surprised if Kato doesn't take the opportunity to eat that Corsair. I guess if the plan is to Dune Blast anyway, the attack's kind of a freebie, but this feels this feels a little too aggressive to me. He doesn't even have land number seven rolled up yet. Yeah. And now he's without his Corsair too. We'll have to turn that top card down on his side of the table as Corsair's no longer in play. So we all know the Doom Blast is there, but that'll go hiding here. So there we go. That's all set. Elspeth actually the draw there for Cato this turn. You see, he's also got a Glare of Heresy and then a Wingmate Rock in his hand, but he knows the Doom Blast is coming, so now how does he want to move forward? That's a very interesting question. Yep. And Elspeth minus, he doesn't make very much sense when he hit, also has his own Siege Rhino in play. There's a very interesting situation here where we could see Kato just say, you know what, I'm going to cast Glare of Heresy to take care of your Siege Rhino, and then your Dune Blast has to take care of my Siege Rhino, and that's not the best use of that card. Exactly. And if, if, if Jay ends up having just another spot removal spell for the Rhino, well, then you can play Elspeth, and Elspeth also kind of forces the hand on Dune Blast without causing Dan to overextend. Well, there's the Glare. 
And here's an attack with the Rhino. So kato has got some catching up to do. He's going to bring Deset down to 19. And we will head back Jay's way. Dune Blast will be the draw, of course. Could have sacrificed Windswept Heat there if he wanted to to make sure that wasn't the draw, but he's happy drawing that card. Now here's End Hostilities. So now after Kato, you know, okay, I still have to play around Dune Blast. Draw a card. Six land would be a nice one. Thoughtseize isn't bad either. No, he'll take it, I'm sure. Now what's interesting in this spot is, are you supposed to cast Thoughtseize? You're not really maximizing your mana. You're supposed to play Wingmate Rock, but you're not getting a Wade Trigger. Are you, supposed, are you supposed to just wait and do nothing? I think that, I don't know, it's, the information, if nothing else, is pretty valuable here. And I would not want to cast Elspeth. If he draws a land next turn, I would not want to cast Elspeth with the Thoughtseize still in hand and not really knowing what's going on. So the Thoughtseize is a little awkward this turn, but I think it's probably better to do that now than try to wait for land number seven. Well, there is Thoughtseize. It's a Rhino and a Dune Blast. And he says, I'm going to take the Dune Blast, as he does have an answer to the Rhino in Elspeth, presumably. So, Deset will draw a card. Now, if Deset draws a Thoughtseize, it's kind of a nightmare, but it's just nothing of consequence, at least at this point. Rhino's going to come down. Jay's going to go up to 22. Kato's going to go down to 8. Somebody's looking for land number 6 here. Comes very easy, but Dan's not, kinda, not quite out of the woods yet. I mean, if he misses this turn... He may just have to cast Wingmate Rock, but land number six is right there. There is Elspeth Sun's champion. Bye-bye, Siege Rhino. Timely draw there for Kato. Deset's going to sacrifice his Windswept Teeth. So he's going to go down to 21, get a land out of his deck, and we'll see what he'll draw in just a moment. But Elspeth looking to take over this game now. Does not take that long. And Jay's list without a ton of ways to get out from under this. Two copies of Utter End, four heroes downfalls. A banishing light, but not really flush with that many answers to Elspeth once it's in play. Well, it's time for him to draw a good one here. When we meet Rock, is, it's okay. It's not the best, not the worst. Has to do. He has to cast it. It at least threatens the Elspeth. Kato will draw. Gonna tick on up here. Three soldier tokens coming. Now Kato might have to cast his wingmate rock just to block the other wingmate rock, but it looks like that's not the case. As perhaps he's willing to let his Elspeth go in exchange for a raid trigger, or perhaps he's drawn a removal spell. I, I think it's more likely the latter. Yes. Uh, and now there's a backup wingmate rock. But this is okay now that Daniel can get the raid trigger. Yeah, he's got to be happy with these exchanges. He's got a lot more insurance now. Here's the attack. Set's going to take that damage. And now there is Wingmate Rock with the trigger. It'll bring along another 3 4 with it. And where we saw that, you know, Hoey not having this card in his deck, Kato does. Yes. And quite powerful in this spot. And now Desset's in a world of trouble there. The, the way these games can change so quickly from. Now, does that look like he was in the driver's seat with all of his wrath effects and trying to figure out the best ways to set him up to a thoughts he's coming off the top and Elspeth taking care of Siege Rhino. And now, Kato's the one with the good board. I think you have to go back a little bit to the turn where Jay attacked with that Corsair crew fix. I think there was some uncertainty about how he wanted to leverage his sweepers, Attention. made an aggressive attack that really tipped off to Kato what was going on. And I think that if Jay just sat on his hands for a little while, wasn't in much of a rush to do anything, he could have gotten a, a little bit more out of the sweeper effects than he ended up doing. See, this is a World Waker also over here, so that's going to come into play. That's going to be a land, and one thing Kato's going to be able to do this turn is gain a whole bunch of life. Looks like a murderous cut. However, we'll take down the actual copy of Winkle Rock. So hold the phone just a moment here. Not going to get a whole bunch of life just yet. So attacking doesn't seem so bad. Yeah, I mean, he, he's down some life, but he's still setting up Kato to die, uh, Jay rather, to die in the course of, I'm guessing, next turn. I mean, yes. this is so much damage. He gets a Elspeth post-combat, another Nissa activation the following turn. A few more soldiers coming. See, Life Total is 8 to 8, but it's uh, it's not actually tied up. And so if he's going to come in, pass the turn back. Perhaps a Doom Blast is off the top of the deck here for Descent. That would be useful if it was. 
It would be useful. He would still be in trouble. Yeah. Even with that draw, I think he'd still be in trouble. It's a thought season. That's not going to do it. Daniel Cato's going to win this match here over Jada Set. Two games to one. Abzan Agro will take down Abzan mid range. Some timely draws there for Cato. Gets the job done. And for the player who got ninth place at Pro Tour New Orleans 2003, off to a good start here. You're a great start there. And again, that was a very complicated game to play from Jay's side of the table.